Sparks all over Britain are fighting back. They're here to resist wage cuts, to resist de-skilling, to resist the breakdown of their terms and conditions. Many of you in these sites suffer worse terms and conditions. You're continually suffering from the abuse that the employers give you. Come out here and show your solidarity with the electricians that are trying to do something and not only on their own behalf, but on behalf of others in the industry. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. 35% pay cut. 16.5% per hour. Really? Yeah. Really, yeah. They're trying to bring in a 35% pay cut for next March for doing conduit trunking and tray. You'll be on 10.50 an hour. Wiring £12 and terminating £14. Bearing in mind the current rates are £16.25 for whatever work you do. You don't have to accept pay cuts. You don't have to accept the dictate of any manager or any employer. You can do something about it. There's people here showing that they can do something about it. This is a protest, really, against uh, Balfour Beatty because they're one of the main companies that's pulled out. Also one of the biggest blacklisters. The eight companies that have done it have got all the bulk of the work in, in the country at the moment. Those companies have got £300 million pounds worth of work between them in the next few years. They've all got major works. NG Bailey have got 10 years work on the channels at Crossrail. Balfour Beatty have got this work, lots of power stations. T Clark have got work all over London. So they've all got projected two, three years work coming up. They also want to change a lot of the term and conditions in the JRB agreement. And it's a mass, mass attack on, on the workforce, really, and basically de-skilling the industry completely. Support the people that want to try and do something about it. Do not ever turn around and say, don't be done anything. There was nothing you can do. We've had a couple of really good meetings. There was 500 people at a meeting in Conway Hall, which was organised by myself and a few other people around London, down, down on the south, south coast. And then we've had uh, a branch meeting. 200 people the other night, so people are all up for all up for doing stuff and away from the union really. They're, they're calling us a splinter group. But unite the union are saying that they're not they're not gonna start a campaign till December. But we're saying it's too late, you need to be doing something now. If we wait for them we'll we'll get nowhere and this agreement will come in. So people are very angry and decided to move on without the union. Last time they tried to cut our pay was back during the Jubilee line and they tried to cut our pay then by de-skilling all the sparks and there was a dispute on the Jubilee line, on Pfizer's, on the Royal Opera House and across the country. But we stopped them introducing the pay cut. Today they're trying to introduce a 35% pay cut across sparks. If they introduce it for sparks They'll try and introduce it for bricklayers, for painters, for carpenters as well. What we're trying to do is send a message. Send a message to NG Baileys. Send a message to Belfield Kilpatrick's. Send a message to Tommy Clark's. We're not going to stand for it. We defeated it twice before. It's SMA, so let's have another go and make sure we put this back to where it should be, back in the trash bin. All those in favour of carrying on the action and leading this around the country, put your hands up now! Come on! The next demonstration, I'd like you all to come if you can, is down at Westfield. Another big site in Stratford where Tommy Clarks are one of the main contractors using agency labour, self-employed. Over the next few years there's going to be a lot of work coming up in building nuclear power stations and also wind farms and also the cross rail and as you know this is going to take a lot of ladder rack, tray, trunking and basket work <clears throat> so obviously this is going to be a good 89% of the work so this is why they're doing it because obviously they're saying well we can make a lot more profit out of this. We're having the same problems up in the northwest and in Liverpool generally um, victimisation of building workers Wages being driven down and indis indiscriminately uh, sacking people. What we're hoping for with demonstrations like this, it'll get out to the wider world and hopefully we can expose some of these companies and get something like the, the building industry back to what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. Over the last five years, 
especially when you have to be a subcontractor, a subby going through agencies, you're treated with complete contempt. Do you want to be treated with complete contempt? The 25 year old got another 40, 50 years in this industry being treated with contempt, frightened for your job, scared to move, scared to speak, scared to say no. All you lads walking in here have got to realise it might be all right today, but when you haven't got your fellas all standing together, they'll come up to you one at a time and say, sorry mate, you're finished. A couple of years ago, I had to have the keyhole surgery on one knee, followed by uh, another operation on the other leg, a couple of months later. And the nurse said, oh, you must be using up all your sick time, all your sick leave. I said, what sick leave? We don't get any. I said, all we do, you've got to be out sick for two weeks, and on the third week, you might get 140 quid. For the two weeks or three weeks you're out, while your leg's getting better, you get nothing. Up until the end of November last year, I was a convener in the car industry. And we have spent the last 10 years in that industry having employers saying to us, well, you just take a little bit of change to your terms and conditions and I'll be okay and we'll return to profitability. Well, let me give you a warning from the car industry and other industries around the country. As soon as the employers have a victory, they don't just tap on the shoulder and say, thank you very much, we won't be back. They come back again and again and again. You've got the workers coming in from, from abroad that are doing a lot cheaper. It's not their fault. If they're earning 50 quid a week back home and they're told they can work over here and they get double the pay or even triple the pay, you think they think to themselves, bloody hell, yeah, I'll go there. Anybody would if you can earn three times as much money. So we've got to educate these people. They can earn 10 times as much money if they if they all join together in a trade union and get the proper rates. A few years ago, when the Labour Party, just before they come in power, they were going to introduce the Warwick Agreement, whereby any migrant workers from across Europe will get the best wage. So if we went to work in Germany and the German wages were better than ours, we would get their rate. If the Germans come over to this country to work and their rate was better than ours, they'd still get the higher rate. So that's what the Labour Party said they would do when they come into power. Of course, they didn't do it, so that's where we are. You don't have to accept anything that the employer throws at you. You can fight back, you can argue back, you can join a trade union, you can join your colleagues out here. You don't have to roll over. During the miners' strike, we had American unions come over to support the British miners, and one of the American unions described solidarity, said we had a, a, a pit that we closed in our pit village, and uh, a little boy fell down it. And uh, so we dropped a rope, and from the bottom of the pit, a little boy's voice was heard saying, it's too short. So they dropped another longer rope, and this time the boy said, it's still too short. And then they dropped a longer steel rope, and the little boy from the bottom of the pit said, tie your ropes together. And that is what solidarity is about. It's about when people back each other in struggle, then it's possible to win. And if you fight everything alone, then you are really in difficulties. That's the whole basis of trade unionism. You actually can't fight and you can't win. Because we've had two drivers, Arvin Thomas and Eamon Lynch, who were sacked on the London Underground. And their only crime was they were defending health and safety and workers' rights on the London Underground. And after bringing the train drivers out for one night, the company capitulated and they brought both of those guys back to work. And that was after saying they would never ever work in London Underground again. You will get support. You will get support for other trade unions. You may feel isolated and a bit alone just now, but that momentum is growing and it will continue to grow. And the employers know that. Your union knows that. You keep up the struggle, you keep fighting, and that's how you won. We will see you next week at the Shab. We'll be there next week at the Shab, and we're not going away!